So in the last episode, we completely wiped out the goblins, and here's how our territory is looking. We're now green. I changed our color to the goblin color because pretty much all colors are taken. The undead lord is still patrolling somewhere around Numis, so we might have to take him out. But for the most part, the undead and the goblins are completely gone. We now could head northeast towards the orcs, and they're probably going to be our next target. But before we attack them, I want to head back to Sartosa and divvy up a lot of this territory to some of our vassals, and they can help defend that. We finished reading the engineer book, and we just got up to 14 engineering. And back at our main town, we can build a prisoner tower for 2100, and it's only going to take 10 days and this will reduce the chance that enemy lords can escape if we do imprison them here and as you can see we have a lot of lords to imprison and we still have a bunch of these tome lords imprisoned as well i'm not sure what's going to happen with these guys or like what we can actually do with them once the undead faction is officially wiped the only thing we can do is let them go i think that's what this option is going to do as far as who we're going to give the territory to we have a bunch of the random companions that we've been building up this dude has eight leadership and four trainer which are both useful for your vassal lords this goblin clack also has eight leadership three and trainer so he's gonna make for a good lord next we have this chaos companion Zar has who we've had for quite some time and this dude started with a ton of charisma because yeah we're able to get him up to nine leadership we also put two in trainer and pathfinding which both do give him benefit and i think tactics might as far as how we're going to divvy up the territory i'm not sure if this is super optimal but we're going to do a town plus two villages or three potentially if it does have three villages we're going to give that over to the better lords and the worst ones we're only going to give a castle and a village to and like the mighty fist which is a town it has three villages around it once we take that i'm going to give that over to the chaos lord who has nine leadership so we blitz through the Mighty Fist, Iron Rock, Karak Eight Peaks, and Da Karak Azul. And the only difficult siege out of those four was Iron Rock. Our archers would not lock on to their archers. They were busy locked on to the infantry, which were closer. And those infantry were out of line of sight. So our archers were effectively just completely useless. I decided to go in myself and clear out the archers, but it took a lot of my HP. I went through four healing potions, which is not good. Like we need those healing potions. There also was, I want to say around 500 orcs there. So that made it a little bit more difficult as well. Well, while we were blitzing through the orc territory, they took Da Karak Asgul and are currently resieging the Mighty Fist. We can't worry about that though because the dwarves are on an offensive. From what I could tell, all their lords are now attacking Bloodhorn. We do have a few lords here of our own though and we're only outnumbered a bit over 2 to 1. So on our first attempt, our reinforcements started spawning on this cliff and a lot of them just fell into the abyss. And I'm not sure what caused this, but we're just going to have to try to kill them before we get reinforcements, I guess. One thing I forgot to mention is about a day and a half ago, we got this random event where this beastly dwarf companion joins our party. This guy Gromandal ironically turns up whenever his folk are hard pressed when the odds are against the dwarves. Yet we got the random event right before the dwarves attacked us. This was not a scripted thing. I did not have any influence on this. I didn't even know this guy existed. It just so happened this way. And this dude has 25 more HP than Gotrek and 350 in all proficiencies. So we can give him any weapon. He does have 10 power strikes. So it would be advantageous to give him a melee weapon. But assuming he does have mighty blow, that 10 power strike is actually going to make this a Runic Blunderbuss do more damage. I gave him a Runic Blunderbuss plus three cartridges and hopefully he's going to be a beast in this battle. He also comes with some really beastly Dwarven gear which is kind of hard to come by. This Dwarven Plate Armor, Dwarven Iron Boots, and Dwarven Iron Helm. And then I'm going to give him Gotrax Gloves for plus 12 more body armor. Plus I'm going to give him the Chaos Dwarf Lord Armor which gives him five more head armor that Gotrax was wearing. So we defended the siege before. Essentially we have a bunch of just crap archers up there. And the reason why we put crap archers up there is because as the enemy enters they start focusing those guys and you can see like they're putting their shields towards those dudes and so we don't really want our better archers to be up there because they're gonna get focused first i then put these lead belchers which are not fire belchers they don't do the crazy explosive attack they do a spray attack though that i think can do a little bit of friendly fire but it's not nearly as bad as like the dwarf master engineers and i don't even know if it actually does friendly fire i haven't been paying enough attention to it but these guys are gonna be up here and just kind of helping us out if we need or they'll be spraying to these guys who are facing their shields away towards those guys so they have free reign to just own them basically we also got grombendal over here oh and our reinforcements actually are not spawning in a bad spot maybe i put a rally point way back there towards that area and they were spawning over there because of the rally point i think i put our master engineers back there in the corner because i didn't want them to get killed i didn't want them to aoe us down so that might have been the issue and yeah this is going really well we've killed 456 476 well the kills are just going up very fast 495 81 of our allies are wounded nine dead but we have no dead from the main party and we don't care about our allies really because they're stupid vassals are kind of hard to control sometimes like they'll just kind of wander off and do their own thing so if they lose some troops it's not that big of a deal we also have these annihilators which do spray as well they're like mini lead belchers from the chaos dwarves yeah you can see they're just 
dumping on them as they come in. And already they're down to 15 units. Our allies lost 144 wounded, 22 dead. One dead from the main party. So in that siege, we took out about half the dwarves and the rest of them just left afterwards. We headed over to Dakarak Asgul where there was most of the orc army, so we decided not to attack that. And later on, they march on Iron Rock. It's a big turning point in the war against the orcs. From what I'm guessing, most of their army is attacking Iron Rock. And we were able to get in there with like three or four lords. We're not even outnumbered that bad. And this layout is really brutal brutal to attack. We got our lead belchers back here and the annihilators and they are just spraying into these guys as soon as they enter which seems like it's working pretty well. I don't think they do friendly fire. They do have a spray attack but I'm pretty sure it does not hit friendly units. See I'm not seeing them do any team killing at all. We could put them up there and the enemy cannot hit them I think if they're up there because their archers are locked on these dudes which are slightly closer but I kind of like this position where they just spray them down as they enter. Final casualties we lost one dead. Allies lost 15 dead but I think that's all the Orcs. No, it wasn't. They forced retreats. We forced them to retreat, but we might be able to run them down before they have time to retreat. Like, they probably don't have any troops, right? They're all going to join this battle, which kind of sucks. I would have just rather finished them off in that siege because I don't think we can capture these lords. So we captured the first dude, which is a good sign. One got away. We captured another one. Capture another one. Another one got away. Three more got away. And we freed Sir Aristot. I guess he got captured and rescued. Where I can only imagine are a bunch of his troops. Bretonian units, I think, are his. So after defending at Iron Rock, we headed down to Dakarak Asgol. And there's three orc lords that are patrolling outside who are trying to get into Dakarak Asgol, which is currently guarded by 318 troops and seven lords that have no troops and they have not replenished yet. Looks like they're about to though because they're around 16, 17%. It feels like at around 20% is when they get 40 troops. Now that's just complete guesswork on my end and I don't even know if that's the case but if we could take this now that would be pretty much it for the orcs i think we got in and we were able to build the ladders instantly i don't know if the enemy orc lords got in and yeah Slayo does not feel that bad to attack we got our annihilators up here with their spray damage and they are spraying into these guys up here doesn't really feel like we're locked on anything that's you know out of line of sight oh what those guys are doing some of them seem to be locked on these guys down here like what if we move these guys even closer Will they try to charge out at us, I wonder? Because like maybe they're so close that they're locked on these guys in melee because they're technically kind of like right next to them even though they're not because they're way up there. But I might be onto something here. It seems like they're just charging out at us and we've not killed that many. Not nearly enough for them to charge. We've only killed 114. It does seem like those guys are locked on those dudes down there just because they're technically close enough. And the game doesn't really know that they're like way down here. So there was only 319 there. The other lords did not make it in. And we captured Warboss, Grimgor, Ironhide, the orc leader. And now these orc lords are trying to run. I don't feel like running them down. I think we'll just let them just go off and do whatever. I want to just go back home and divvy up that territory that we just took and then I want to wipe out the orcs. So I went back to Sartosa and forgot to divvy up the territory so that was pretty useless. I would turn around but we're already really far. We're at Karaz uh, Karak right now and there's no dwarf lords here and no master engineers so we're just going to try to take this before heading over to Grand Peak where hopefully the orc lords have not replenished too much. Also I'm doing a new plan of action on the sieges and on battles in general. Earlier I ran past some orc lords. I didn't want to fight them on the field and I should not be lazy when it comes to that stuff because we have so many cavalry and I've grabbed every single one of our cavalry from Sartosa and I put them at the top of our party and we're just going to have them run in and just either get knocked out or get killed immediately before every battle. And the goal is just to get rid of a lot of these things, which is going to reduce our wage cost. Well, we got up to level 38 now and shout out to the comment section for giving me this suggestion which is we're going to max out our looting and you can steal cattle from villages and I don't believe there's much penalty from doing that and you get a ton of cattle for maxing out your looting skill. So we finally made it to Grand Peak and as I suspected we waited too long. This battle is going to be pretty brutal. There's also some lords outside that are heading in. We should actually take these guys on the field. It'll make things a bit easier and two other lords actually helped out which is really good for us. Unfortunately as I the slaughter has quite a few abilities that he's casting he's like the undead lord i think i don't even think he's their lord i think he's just like one of their beast caster guys and he's got his own set of abilities it would be nice to take him out and we did bring one caster with us this is actually not going that bad 29 of us are wounded seven dead 121 of them are dead and I'm going to blame that on our positioning right here we got all the fire glaives in a really good spot the archers are down here which is actually working i guess i shouldn't move them Seems like they're kind of low, like maybe I should move them back a little bit or something, I don't know. I mean it's working, so whatever, just keep it like it is. And yeah, I was kind of missing the epic feel with 
having no casters because it does make the game feel a lot more epic it makes battles just a lot more fun i guess but yeah that was really good we took out three lords that we would have probably had a fight pretty soon i zagged the slaughter as well who's apparently one of the most infamous orcish warlords i think he's like a big deal basically in the warhammer lore i'm thinking about a way that we can do this and the only way i'm really thinking is i just gotta get in there and take out their archers i'm gonna have everyone actually charge i'm gonna try to lead the charge uh take the weapon out and just, okay, run past these guys, I guess, if I can. Let's get to the archers. There's no real winning here, because once I get to the back line, they're all just going to shoot me. Although, things are actually going pretty well. I got reinforcements, though, and the reinforcements are going to start bowing at me from behind. There's 113 left, and I was a little bit careless with our units. We only have 20 left. I would like to take it on this attack, but I don't know if it's going to be possible. If I chug healing potions, then definitely, but we could also just retreat, and our units could just heal up a little bit. Oh, they're finally charging out. Okay, we need to dip, I think. Our units cannot get killed. Uh, they're not going for units. All right, so after that battle, we were down to 12 units. Uh, Orc Lord chased us over to Borfang, where there were some units in the garrison, so we grabbed those, took out the Lord, and by the time we got back to Grand Peak, we were replenished up to 68 units. There's 174 in the garrison, and their Lords have, I want to say, like 40 or 50 more, but I think we took out all their archers. And yeah, they don't have a single archer up on the top there. A couple of them are throwing some throwing weapons, I guess, but that's it. We'll start off with some Screaming Skulls. We'll see how they feel about that. Are you guys really missing? There we go. It's supposed to be dead eyes, but uh, well, this guy is fired. He actually did some team killing right at the start. 11 of us wounded, mainly from this guy, I think. Or it was this guy, one of the two. We'll now have these annihilators just start spraying at these dudes for the rest of the siege. Oh, and I have my gun too. Should start doing that. Oh yeah. And it's only a matter of time, baby, till the orcs are completely wiped. 